Recently, a new Netflix exclusive came out called Atlas. It's a $100 million sci-fi film featuring Jennifer Lopez. And if that makes you scratch your head, well, you're not alone. I was doing the same. But then I dug into it and noticed it's actually doing very well on Netflix. And in fact, every movie Jennifer Lopez puts out on these platforms, these streamers, does very well. So that had me questioning my existence altogether. Like, what is this woman's appeal? Why are so many people watching movies with her? And I think it kind of is the Kardashian effect where some really despise her but can't look away. In fact, it draws them out of curiosity. Others genuinely think she's fantastic. They still remember her from way back in the day when she did Selena or Enough or a bunch of rom-coms that were like decently entertaining and so they're still on board. In any case, when I put out a video or review or whatnot about Jennifer Lopez, my numbers go way up. These J-Lo videos do far better than all the stuff to the point where I might just rebrand the whole damn thing Adam does Jennifer Lopez, but that doesn't sound appropriate. Listen, I gave up questioning anything in this world a long time ago. What's popular, why people watch, it, it's all out the window at this point. We have Furiosa bombing at the box office, a ton of major tentpole movies are failing, and then here we have Atlas with J-Lo. Doing just fine. She'll probably get another one. Who knows? But I'm going to do a spoiler video talking about all the ins and outs of this brilliant piece of cinema. In actuality, I thought this movie was pretty crap, but let's talk about it. Before I go on what will surely be an amazing journey, make sure to hit that subscribe button so these videos show up in your feed so you know when a new video comes out. I would appreciate it. I, J Jennifer Lopez would appreciate it. I'm looking over there like she's there, but I, I'm nothing. I'm nothing to her. There's no one over there. In the distant future, I say distant because the stuff, the tech in this movie is wildly out of control compared to where we're at today, even though the focus is going to be on AI, which is something we're currently dealing with. An android by the name of Harlan will betray mankind, wiping out hundreds of thousands of them before the humans wise up and fight back. This forces Harlan and his troops to flee the planet and the galaxy altogether, where he will wait patiently to finish what he started which is human annihilation, or at least for the most part. Now, if you don't think about this plot for more than five seconds, it's fine. And I think most people at this point don't expect much from Netflix exclusives. They're just things people put on now in the background as a companion piece to something else going on. Maybe dad's doing something in the garage and he's got a TV out there. Oh, Atlas, perfect. Let's throw this noise on in the background. Maybe mom's been working her butt off all week and the weekend's here, so she just wants to kick back and relax, throw something on while she puts a puzzle together. But for someone like me, that actually wants to invest in a good story, uh, be wrapped up in what's happening. This, uh, yeah, this isn't gonna fly. I had a lot of questions. Why is Harlan even concerned about humans at all? He's an advanced AI android who's been off grid for many, many years, almost three decades. And we've established now that there's different galaxies within this universe they've set up. Why the hell does he want to go back to Earth? He could just repopulate somewhere else. He's got the capabilities, he has the tech. I also wonder why all this time gone he hasn't built up a massive army. He's only got a few dozen people it seems like and some flying drones. What the hell's this guy been doing? For an advanced AI, I would imagine that every day is like six months for them. They should be able to get a ton accomplished. Anyway, no one probably cares except for me so let's just push on past this. After a war breaks out and Harlan flees, 28 years go by. Not 30, not 25, 28. That's how specific this is. Very oddly specific in this instance. <laughs> the writer's like, 30 seems too easy. Let's do 28. That'll throw people off. That'll make people think, you know what? I put a lot of effort into this script because 28, who takes the time to not round it up to 30? We open with an updated Hollywood sign. I think it's actually like in a condo complex. It's got windows and shit. It looks very high end. Somehow in this world, Hollywood hasn't burned to the ground, which is incredibly impressive. And the camera's gonna take us into a pretty cool action scene. I will say, Atlas, like a decent amount of Netflix movies, manages to convince me, or to trick me, I guess more appropriately, that this is gonna be a decent movie. 
And so 20 or 30 minutes, I'm kind of on board. And we have a really good action scene here. There's some great hand-to-hand -hand combat where a bunch of soldiers are trying to take down this AI bot. It's cool. It's slick. It's choreographed. It's shot well. And uh, this will be the highlight of the film. The AI dude almost gets away, but he's thwarted by an energy cube the soldiers had set up downstairs. <laughs> he would have got away with it too if it wasn't for that pesky cube. Enter Jennifer Lopez. Atlas Shepard is a vain, self-centered, controlling, narcissistic, hard-nosed woman. This is going to be a tough role for Jennifer Lopez to play. She's also one of the best data analysts around and knows Harlan better than anyone else in the business. She's also incredibly good at chess and loves herself a cup of Americano coffee. She can just never seem to find one. Never can this poor woman find an Americano. It's, it's really the joke that never gives, but they're going to keep using it over and over. After an opening in her apartment, she's going to head to the precinct where she gets head from a robot. Just... I mean, she, she has a, a robot's head. I'm sorry, that came out wrong. Casca's his name, and he's a wily one, one that's going to show up constantly throughout this flick. We have a pretty snazzy interrogation scene here where this head is coming out of a briefcase. It looks slick. I'm still kind of invested in this movie right now. It's doing a good job really, really pulling at the strings here to get me invested. After a lovely conversation, she kills Casca with a chess piece. This might come back into play later. Chess is all throughout this film. General Jake Booth, AKA Mark Strong, who's clearly just cashing a paycheck here, is super over the moon that Atlas has figured out the location of Harlan and now they can go take him down, but not kill him. They're going to bring him back for questioning and they're going to get his CPU. That's the important piece they need, the CPU. Atlas is pissed. She wants this dude dead. She knows what a threat he is. And Mark Strong's not having it. Uh, Booth is like, listen, bitch, uh, we're going to go without you, okay? You're, you're a data analyst. We don't need you. And can I just be frank, ma'am? You can barely walk in those jeans. Those jeans are painted on. They're so tight. Look at, bend your knees. Just, I'll wash. I'll wait. Bend, bend your knees. And she can't because every walking scene that Jennifer Lopez has, which are is very few, she's just kind of kind of like bow-legged walking around. <laughs> Put the woman in some looser pants, for God's sakes. She's, she's in her 50s. Big asses are everywhere now. It can't be a thing dedicated to her at this point. Listen, she might have been one that championed it early on, and we all appreciate her for it, but it's played out, okay? Let her be comfortable. Throw her in some sweats. Get her some capris. There's no reason to put her in such tight clothes anymore. She's done her time. After the conversation with Booth, she's going to meet up with Sterling K. Brown's character, Elias Banks. Banks gives Atlas a tour of the compound that she's incredibly familiar with, so she's just kind of rolling her eyes at all these introductions. But she's going to see the new and improved ARC suits which is essentially one of the mech suits from Titanfall. If you remember those games, there's a couple of them. They're pretty solid. Uh, but yeah, it's just a human inside of a mech. But the big difference is the Neuralink. It's really hard for me to say that word. Neuralink. It's where the human and the machine are one-to-one. -one. The AI and the human brain are connected and they become some beautiful new creation altogether. This would be fine and dandy if it wasn't outlawed. That's right. This is tech that was not supposed to be played with. And Atlas is furious. She wants no part about this. It's going to cause destruction. It's going to lead to the downfall of the human race. And this is going to be the key component going forward for the rest of the film. Atlas is going to refuse to Neuralink up with the mech that she will get in. And it will become so annoying that you'll just want her to die. Because at this point, you might as well. If you're not going to take... It's like going on a roller coaster and not putting down the little chest protector thing when you're going down a drop off. And then you get upset and you start crying because you're like dangling off the side of the thing going, there must be an easier way. There has to be an easier. Yeah, it's called put the harness down. Okay, it's called put the fucking harness down. During this walk and talk, the background is absolutely shot out of a cannon. There are arc suits jumping all over the place. People are hopping around. Nothing has any weight to it. It's just like, dunk, dunk, bang, bing, bang, bing. and Atlas is walking in the foreground like, what's going on with the neuro? Like, I don't like this. <laughs> Stuff's blowing up. It is Looney Tune-esque. What's happening back there? Shepard's going to plead her case, how she has to go with. They need her on the mission because she's emotionally unstable and pretty much compromised when it comes to her mental state. So she has to go with to stop Harlan. 
And for any military official, obviously, yeah, that's a green light. That's a go. Oh, and also, if you're big into drinking games, take a shot every time they say Harlan. You will be dead from alcohol poisoning within 20 minutes of this film. Harlan's over there. Harlan got away. Harlan, 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 Harlan. <laughs> Harlan. Smash cut to them inside of their spaceship and they are already flying to the next galaxy to Harlan's place. How long does it take? Unclear. Apparently a couple hours, that's what I got from it. So humans can just hop around galaxies, go into planets willy-nilly? Why are we even on Earth anymore? Are you telling me there's not one hospitable planet somewhere else? Do we have terraform capabilities? Short for capabilities? That was unnecessary. And so is this film. We have one scene on the ship, and it's it's just pure uncut gold. Where Atlas joins Banks in the meeting room. There's, I don't know, 15, 20 pilots in there. And they're all listening to Banks. But Atlas, for some reason, is under the impression she's now in charge of this mission. Even though she just got to tag along for the ride, like, a minute before they left. So she comes in with a stack of papers. One of the douchebag pilots is like, Paper? Where did you even get paper? <laughs> what, 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 what year are we in here, huh? What, what is Grandpa bringing his homework in? <laughs> no, you suck. And Atlas kind of does suck. Because the first thing she says is, We're done using technology. Everything from now on is on printable paper. We cannot trust the machines. She ironically states from within a giant spaceship powered by AI and other fancy technologies. But yes, going forward, everything's going to be done on paper. You can't trust anyone. All these people are going to be dead within five more minutes of screen time. So this whole thing is completely useless. We already know that Atlas doesn't trust AI. We don't need another scene where she goes, I told you guys, you guys were idiots. And to that point... She's wrong. The, the AI doesn't fail them. Their mechs are perfectly solid. Nothing's going on there. They just happen to get ambushed. This scene is out of control. There is explosion, CG, millions of dollars are getting shat out under the screen. I could barely understand what was happening. Stuff was blowing up. Atlas gets thrown into one of the suits. She gets a very quick crash course on how to use this thing. And then boom, jettisoned off the side of the ship. Everyone's dead. She gets down onto the planet. Unfortunately, she's not out of the woods yet because a new version of Casca is waiting for her along with five other hunter AI robot things. And so we have a chase now. For the rest of the film, which is about an hour and a half left, this is a two hour movie for some reason, JLo is just gonna be inside of this pretend mech suit flying around, sweating, crying, getting angry, getting hurt. And you know what? She does okay. She does fine. Do I think a different actress maybe would have suited this role better? Yeah. But I also think this is kind of a tough thing to pull off for anyone because it's just not that interesting. We, we've seen this done a bunch of times already better. But I'm not knocking Jenny for the block on her performance. It's, it's, it's fine. It's perfectly adequate for the, the product that they're putting out. During the chase where she refuses to sync up with her suit, which is going to be something that we have a conversation over 25 times going forward. If you would just sync up with me, if we could just pair, we would be so much better. We would be able to do, you know, you could just communicate via mind telepathy and I can jump flip and do cool shit. She's like, no, no, I don't trust you. I don't trust you at all. Meanwhile, they're getting missiles shot out of them. They're falling off the sides of cliffs. She's one second from death every second in this movie. And he's like, dude, I can help you if you just link up. She goes, no, I refuse. I would rather die, which is going to happen right now, rather than sync up with you and possibly die. The logic is a bit flawed, especially for a data analyst. They do get out of it alive, but not unscathed, unfortunately. She has a broken leg. Fortunately, since this, I guess, happens a lot, there is... <laughs> there's a procedure for this. They have, they have things set up inside of the suit to take care of it. She gives the go-ahead, and some little machine leg repair kit comes out. Beep, boop, beep, beep. Psss, sprays off the wound. A little staple gun comes out. Then they put the coolant cream on there. And then a brand new skin plate goes on top. 
All good. She even receives a protein cube afterwards, like she went to the doctors and got a lollipop for good behavior. It's funny. They make a joke about it in the film. I will say, some of the jokes land. O overall, this is, this is a bad movie, but there are moments that are entertaining. There is okay action from time to time. There's a couple humorous parts that I think hit the landing, but overall, just... Not worth, not worth anybody's time, it, unless, again, you're building something in the garage or you're maybe doing the dishes. Uh, this can pass the time, I suppose. If you're sick of watching The Office for the 500th time. The AI and Atlas build up quite a rapport over the film. Uh, he's going to be known as Smith, has a very nice, pleasant voice. He, he, he's charming, he's witty, he's got everything that she wants. And eventually they're going to tie this knot. Eventually this marriage is going to happen between the two. She's going to pronounce, it's going to be May. And they're going to get in sync together. Subscribe for bad puns. But they don't fully sync up because she just can't do it. She just can't go that extra step. She backs off at the last second, so they're only... 95% synced up or some weird number. Actually, knowing the writer, it's probably 98% because it likes to be a little different. Not 95, not 90, we'll go 98. They get head from another Casca. It's his head blows off again. It's all that's left of him and, and she crushes it. At which point Smith looks around, takes stock of all the destruction, all the dead soldiers and friends, and he says, peace to the fallen. Which is going to be the catchphrase of the film and sounds like something Optimus Prime would say when one of the Transformers dies, but we're using it here. Peace to the fallen. What I've done! Pour it out for Chester. Shepard and Smith, or once combined will be known as Shith. I just made that up, but I like it. Shith makes their way to what is Harlan's compound, but they're discovered instantly because Harlan's been expecting them. Bam, he powers down Smith's suit and they kidnap Shepard. And Simu Lu finally shows up to make an appearance. He's in this thing for maybe a grand total of 10 minutes, phoning the fuck out of this role. Just really giving nothing to this performance. <laughs> He's going to spend this entire time monologuing about the past, about how he grew up with Atlas, basically a brother to her. Her mother created Harlan. He was her baby boy at the end of the day, and she spent more time caring for him and learning about him, and it made Atlas jealous. It made her think, hey, maybe I got to be smarter and stronger than him to gain my mother's attention. It's all very, uh, very powerful stuff for someone somewhere, I'm sure. Not for me, but uh, yeah, that, that's what we deal with for the next five or 10 minutes. We do flashbacks, we have this whole thing, and then it's time to poke out an eye. Earlier in the film, we established that Banks is alive. Of course he is. There was a 1% chance he could be, and since this is a schlocky Hollywood film, that 1% becomes a 100% chance. He's alive, but he's been beaten and tortured. He had like five broken ribs. He's got broken bones all over the place. And Harlan freaking sticks some magic thingy into his eyeball like it's in the Matrix and he sucks out some information. That's gotta hurt. And now he's gonna do it to J-Lo. Jenny from the Block's about to rock an eye patch, folks. He sticks this thing in her eye. We pull back on the camera and she's flopping around like a crappie. <laughs> But then we show her again and she's perfectly fine. No damage to the eye done at all. I rewound this thing like four times. I could not understand what the hell he did. Did this little stringy thing kind of go around the back of the eyeball? Is that what was going on there? Because it looked like he was sticking it straight in. But again, what he did to the other guy was far more barbaric, but she's good to go. And thankfully Banks is still kind of alive because it turns out his intercom is still very much working. Harlan, a super genius AI, didn't think to take the transponder that he has on his ear. Didn't want to take that tech away. He let him keep that. So he hands that over to J-Lo and he tells her she can contact Smith on it for some reason. So she's like, hey Smith, you still good? He's like, yeah bro. He flies back over, she jumps into the suit and now we have our big final action standoff. Her and Smith fully sync up. They are now officially Atlith or Shepith, whatever you want to go with. They fight a bunch of dudes, not that many, considering, again, 28 years on this planet. Probably could have built more than 45 men and a couple droids. She fights them off. <laughs> Explosions everywhere. 
but she's cornered. Shepeth is about to die. There's nowhere to run. But oh, thankfully Banks is still not dead, was able to hobble his ass across a massive warehouse. I have no idea how this was possible. And along the way, he grabbed a laser gun. So he's like March of the Penguins over here, broken bones all over the place. I don't know how he got here so fast because she has jet thrusters going way across country. But yeah, he made it. He, he's fine. He blows up the place, killing himself in the process, risking his life to save hers. And now we're going to get the one-on-one -on -one final boss battle. Harlan to your butts. It's going down. I'm yelling timber. Before the fight commences, H-Dog sends a giant nuke towards Earth because he now has the shield codes he needed by prying into the eyeballs of both of our leads, even though her eye's perfectly fine. But yes, giant nuke is on its way to Earth. Shepeth is not going to let it happen. Skew, 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 skew! They shoot off a bunch of rockets. Blows up in outer space, but the debris comes flying down, or debris, if you're a dumbass. Shit's blowing up again. She turns back to Shang-Chi and she's like, My turn. My turn. I say that in everything. Remember when Batman said it in the stupid Justice League movie? My turn. And that's it. He did, He shoots like three parademons. And then Steppenwolf's like, Rocky! She smashes the thing down because Batman's just an idiot with a machine gun in that film. <laughs> what was I talking about? Oh yeah, Adel ass. Shang-Chi pulls out a laser whip from his skin. First it's a sword, but then later it turns into his rings that he has in the MCU movies. J-Lo says, enough, was a movie I was once in. But also enough of the shenanigans here. It's time to put an end to this. They fight for a bit. Harlan starts to crawl away. This is impossible. Does not compute. Why didn't I upload my AI to a cloud server and just put it in a bunch of different bots? This movie doesn't make any sense. Why am I confined as an all-knowing AI to just one physical body? So smart. Yeah, so she kills him by using a chess piece to the side of the head, which was foreshadowed earlier when she did that to Casca. She just has a chess piece on her at all times? Is that a chess piece in your pocket? Are you just happy to see me? It's a chess piece. Oh, oh, that's odd, but okay. Unfortunately, this fight took a heavy toll on Smith. He's not going to make it out of this one. He died. He's dead. She's fine. And here comes the cavalry just in time to get her off of this planet. We end with the back end of J-Lo as she walks away from the camera, caboose fully on display. A new pair of pants, a little bit more comfortable looking, but still not leaving much to the imagination. She gets inside of a new ARC-10 unit and a familiar voice fires up. It's Smith, of course. It, it's been Smith all along. He's back, baby. Smith is back. He's better than ever. Still quipping, still smart, still fun. And yeah, that's the end of the movie. She's happy. She tears up. She loves AI now. Everything was, uh, I, I don't know what the point of the movie was. What was the point of this movie? I don't know. I think the point was you got your puzzle done that you were putting together. You got those dishes done that you were cleaning. You got the laundry folded you were working on. Yeah, it's, uh, that's what it is. That's Atlas. A perfectly lame, mediocre sci-fi film that's not worth watching, but a lot of people did because it's the new exclusive on Netflix and nobody's going out to the movie theaters anymore because cinema's dead. It's perfect. I love it. I love having a movie channel and this is what I'm talking about. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. Did I do this film justice by talking about the beginning, middle, and end? Did I hit every beat that I needed to? Leave a comment, let me know. Please think about liking the video and subscribing. I post movie reviews, rants, roasts every week on the channel. Would love to have you stick around. If you really like to listen to me ramble, I have a second channel, Adam Does Rants. I'm trying to get that one off the ground. That's all non-movie related stuff. It's all very fun and silly and inconsequential in the grand scheme of things. But uh, again, if you want to do your dishes with someone in the background, I'll be your guy. All right, that's all I got. Thanks for watching and hopefully I see you next time. And all we need now is for Jennifer Lopez to get a new version of I'm Real out. Bring back Ja Rule. Let's make it happen. What the hell's he been up to?
Cause I'm real. The way you walk, the way you move, the way you talk. Cause I'm real. And I can't go on without you. I've been thinking about this relationship with all the... That song was fire. Baby, crazy. Yeah, I'm real. Baby, 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 baby. And I... <laughs>